Lee, we're going to have more on this with Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro Capital Pacific, who is in Westport, Connecticut. Hi, Peter. Good to have you back on the show. You know, we've been watching these markets over in Asia, and I know the global markets are rallying, but Shanghai markets are up nearly 25% in just the last three months. So I guess the natural question is, is that a new bull market? Well, first of all, you have to remember how much the markets came down over there. So uh, they've had a pretty big bear market it, it, for a couple of years now. So I think a rally uh, was, was due, may probably long overdue. But you also have to keep it in perspective that in many cases, it's not even stocks that are gaining value. It's money that's losing value. You know, in China in particular, they've pegged the dollar. That means the Chinese are now importing American inflation. And that's not good uh, for the Chinese the consumer or the economy, but it's certainly going to make nominal prices rise, not just you know, the price of food and energy, but stock prices are going to go up too. Peter, when you speak to investors and you talk to an awful lot of them out there, how do they view Chinese stocks? Do they look at it as a value play or a growth play? And how do they assess the risk? Well, m my clients are probably you know, not the norm here in the United States because I'm very bullish on China particularly long term. I, I like the free market reforms that are being made. I like an even faster pace. Uh, I'm looking forward to the day when China depegs uh, from the dollar. Maybe they even back their currency with something real like gold instead of something fake like, like the dollar. But my clients are more optimistic. We, we see what China is doing right more than what China is doing wrong. And there is tremendous, I think, value in a lot of Chinese shares. And I think the political risk is overblown. I think there's a lot of political risk here in the United States. I think that there's a big risk that the U.S. government is going to start raising taxes and confiscating profits through taxation. I think you have less political risk over there, although the market doesn't perceive that, and therefore you can buy Chinese stocks at a pretty good discount. I want to follow up with that because you mentioned the United States in particular. You know, and it's not just the U.S., it's also Europe. There are so many folks that are still very skeptical of the global community, if you will, uh, for lack of a better word. Why are investors still so skeptical of this global rally that we've seen? Well, I mean, first of all, a lot of investors have been burned. <clears throat> you know, they've, they've been chasing <clears throat> momentum stocks. They bought the wrong kinds of stocks. And so uh, they haven't had a very pleasant experience over the last decade or so. Remember, a lot of investors got suckered into the market in 1999-2000 and you know they bought a bunch of dot-com stocks and they all evaporated and uh, so investors are a little gun shy and so sometimes they're missing out on real opportunities because they got burned so many times in the past but they have to understand the difference between speculating on those types of stocks and real value buying real companies at low PEs that pay good dividends is different than speculating on some pie-in-the-sky company that doesn't really have any earnings and you're just betting on uh, some future potential that may never be realized. Peter, I'm gonna, I apologize, but I'm going to put you on the spot here. You mentioned you're bullish on China. I want to ask you any particular sectors you're looking at or any particular stocks that you're looking at in China that you feel is very uh, yeah. worth investing at this time. Yeah, well, you know, my company manages a China-specific a specific mutual fund. So we have a mutual fund that focuses on China specifically, and we have Chinese names in our other products. But I like the companies that are more domestically focused, that I think are focused towards uh, the emerging Chinese consumer. I think that China is going to begin to consume more of its own production as the Chinese currency is allowed to rise. That's going to be good for China and good for businesses that are selling in China. I also like raw natural resource companies. And if companies are exporting out of China, I like the exports to be confined more to the Asian economies because I think those are more sustainable because the trading partners can actually afford to pay for the products. See, the problem with the, the relationship that China has with America is we can only buy Chinese products if China lends us the money. So it's all vendor financing. But the problem is, as soon as the lending stops, we can't pay. Not only, you know, we can't even pay back the money we've already borrowed. So I, I don't want to be in companies in China that depend on America uh, as their customer. I'd rather have the customers be in China or in some other country in Southeast Asia, for example, where people are actually working hard in producing and exporting, because those are more viable markets for China than the U.S. All right, Peter Schiff joining us from Euro Pacific. Thank you so much.